You're watching News 4, your local news leader. Now, live from Buffalo, this is News 4 at 7. Good evening and thank you for joining us on News 4 at 7. I'm Patrick Ryan. Jordan is off tonight. Here are some of the stories we're bringing you this hour. The men and women of the Buffalo Fire Department promise to never forget Jason. Remembering the sacrifice made by Buffalo firefighter Jason Arno one year ago today. And for tonight, the clouds will increase. We'll see a few rain showers that will continue into our Saturday morning. The latest coming up. And she's being compared to the sun. We're learning new details about a daycare worker who was killed in a crash on her way to work this week in Hamburg. And when the unthinkable happens, it shakes us to our very core. However, while our hearts are broken, our spirits remain strong. Buffalo's bravest stand strong together, remembering one of their own who died in the line of duty. Family and friends of fallen firefighter Jason Arno held a remembrance ceremony this morning. Today marks exactly one year since Arno was killed while battling a four alarm fire in downtown Buffalo. News 4's Marley Tuskus has the details. Today is one year without Jay. Let us never forget. Let us always honor and remember him. Ut vivant Ali. There were tears of sorrow and at moments happiness this morning as dozens gathered to remember the life and legacy of Jason Arno. When remembering Jay at the firehouse, the common themes were a great relief, always dependable, did the small things when no one was looking, cooked incredible meals, and of course, he used every pot and pan knowing he didn't have to do the dishes afterwards. Arno was killed one year ago today while battling a four alarm fire on Main Street in downtown Buffalo. The fire was ruled an accident, started by contractors using a blowtorch. Arno had been inside when an explosive backdraft tore through the building. His final act was to issue a mayday call to save his fellow firefighters. Words could never truly express the deep loss of pain that we have suffered. But we continue to be there as a testament to the dedicated service and sacrifice of firefighter Jay Arno and to all the firefighters we've lost because of the performance of their duties. Arno leaves behind his wife, Sarah, and daughter, Olivia. In addition to his family, his brothers and sisters of the Buffalo Fire Department attended today's ceremony. The tragedy occurs. It does bring us closer together. We're already as close as we could possibly be. You know, you know fire service is our second family, you know, as we know. So, uh, yeah, it does. And uh, unfortunately, we've gone through it, you know, on several occasions. And, uh, this is just uh, one of the latest tragedies that we've had to endure. Soon we could see a memorial here rather than just a fence in an empty lot. City leaders tell us they are planning to build a permanent memorial in Arno's honor. Reporting in Buffalo, Marley Tuskus, News 4. Family and friends of Jason Arno honor him through the Firefighter Arno Memorial or FAM Foundation. The nonprofit benefits first responders and their families. FAM was inspired by the outpouring of love and support Arno's loved ones received in the days and months after his death. If you'd like to donate, you can find a link on our website, WIDB.com, under the Founded on 4 tab. The loss of Arno left a lasting imprint on the hearts of his fellow firefighters. Earlier on News 4 at 4, we sat down with Buffalo Fire Chaplain Father Paul Seil. He reflected on today as extremely emotional, especially for the family of Jason Arno. The best thing we can do is just to be present to one another. The family will continue all of their lives to really be in sorrow. There'll always be something missing. Hopefully, as we go through the years, just like with any tragedy, hopefully through the years we get to be at least, uh, I guess, more accepting sure. or more healed, I guess. Father Seil also says it's important for first responders to reach out for support during these difficult times. And even on this painful day, the City of Good Neighbors came together to support one another. More than 20 volunteers with Hope Rises teamed up with Blaisdell Pizza. They brought a warm meal to every Buffalo Fire Company. The organizers say a slice of pizza is the least they could do to show their love and support for Buffalo's bravest. You don't realize how much you're needed for the first responders. They don't get enough credit. And it's the least that we could do to thank them for their service, um, especially after the heartache that we received. Students from Starpoint schools also made cards for first responders. Those messages were delivered with the pizza. 
Our coverage, our coverage of fallen Buffalo firefighter Jason Arno continues throughout the evening, both on air and online at WIVB.com. We turn to the weather now with a live look over downtown Buffalo from our tower cam and it was a wonderful day to get outside mm -hmm. and take in the sunshine. Yeah. A lot of people out there jogging and walking their dogs in Delaware Park this morning, Mike. Yeah, a much better day today, a lot more sunshine. It was quite cold yesterday, but the start of March on the warm side will continue bad. to be warm. So we're going to see this warming trend continue the next couple of days, but let's take a look back. December, January, February, what we call meteorological winter uh, is the second warmest on record. And uh, the first warmest, we're already off by uh, 0.1 degrees. So uh, the warmest was from 1931 to 1932 was 34.6. That was the average temperature. And then this year was 34.5. So if you felt like this winter has been on the warm side of things, yes, you are right. And then again, we did see uh, this warming trend that will continue the next couple of days. A gorgeous view though. A look over to uh, Buffalo, Corey Bruce, who always sends us beautiful photos. Blue, blue sky, sunshine was coming down for today. Our highs, 52 was the high in Buffalo. Springville at 50, Bradford at 48, and Jamestown 53. Not bad thinking or comparing to what we saw yesterday when we were in the mid 20s. Our winds out of the south and southeast, that is a warmer flow, and we'll see some warmer weather just continue into the weekend. We do see some rain showers move in tonight, then continue into tomorrow. I'll talk more about that coming up. One person is dead after they were hit by a truck in Cheektowaga. It happened at 1230 this afternoon on Walden Avenue near the Galleria. Cheektowaga police tell News 4 no charges have been filed. New York State troopers and AMR assisted at the scene. Walden Avenue from Galleria Drive to Duke Road was closed earlier while police investigated this incident. That area is now back open to traffic. Tonight, we're learning more about the 37-year-old woman killed in a crash on Lakeview Road in Hamburg. One of several fatal vehicle crashes this week, News 4's Tara Lynch spoke with her co-workers about their lost friend. Devastating. Devastating. It truly was a shock. She was on her way to work. So, of course, that makes me feel guilty in some way. 37-year-old Jenny Zolke is remembered as a ray of sunshine who always lit up the room when she walked in. She died in a crash Wednesday morning at the intersection of Route 5 and Lakeview Road. She worked at Lakeview Children's World for 10 years, caring for the infants there. Her coworkers say she was on her way to work and was less than a mile from the daycare when the crash happened. Once we got to know each other, you instantly fall in love with her. She's just the sweetest thing in the world. She's funny. She's just always happy and bubbly. It just, you know, breaks my heart for, you know, these little ones that loved her dearly and entrusted her. Um, because that's what it takes in the infant room. Jenny's niece, Cameron, spoke with News 4 today, saying her aunt was a bright light in every room. Cameron remembers Jenny as her role model and a big sister. One parent said to me, you know, I didn't know Jenny that well, but we loved her because she loved our children. This was her family. She always said that she loved the babies, but she didn't really care to have any herself, but she would come here just to take care of the babies because she absolutely adores kids. The daycare is asking the parents to tell the children if they choose. Now, Jenny's coworkers are trying to move forward. We need to be here together. We need to talk about it. We need to work through it and, and move on um, together the best we can. Tara Lynch, News 4. An accused rapist could spend 25 years behind bars. The Erie County District Attorney's Office tells us 28-year-old Ricky Roberts Jr. pleaded guilty to one count of first-degree rape yesterday. The DA says on the evening of December 8, 2023, Roberts, who claimed to have a gun, forced himself onto a woman on Hurdle Avenue in Buffalo. The victim was eventually able to break free and get help. She was taken to Kenmore Mercy for her injuries. Roberts is set to be sentenced in April.
A small amount of relief on local drivers' wallets has run dry. A pandemic-era cap on gas tax in Erie County expires today. The measure capped the county tax, so sales tax didn't kick in until the first $2 of gas. Now drivers will have to pay the 4 and 3 quarters percent county gas tax when they fill up at the pump. According to AAA, the average price per gallon in the Buffalo area is $3.30. Still to come on News 4 at 7, the Queen City comes together to remember a trailblazer in the local Irish community and the lasting effect of her legacy. Today at the Buffalo Irish Center, the community came together to remember its former director. Local leaders unveiled a new sign in honor of Mary Hennigan. The sign outside of the South Buffalo Center reads Mary Hennigan Way, commemorating her lasting legacy on not only the center, but the fabric of the Queen City's culture. Mary's children were also at today's ceremony, who say the sign now puts a name on what was already considered Mary's block. My dancers will be dancing upstairs right there and they'll be able to look out the window and see that sign just like they look across and they see the gift shop and I think it's just like they, they love the countdown as well. So I just think it'll like keep her attached to the building and to the, the community. Today's ceremony fell on what would have been Mary's 78th birthday. Straight ahead at 7, residents in Lockport are calling for action tonight after being forced out of their apartments because of flooding. Hear the response from the owners of their property when we come back.
Our call for action team has fielded several complaints about an out of state property management company that has apartments in the Buffalo area. Now we're getting more complaints from tenants of Burgo Realty. Tenants on the ground floor of one building at the Maplewood Apartments in the town of Lockport were flooded a month ago. This comes after a series of winter storms hit the area. Burgo Realty says there was a surge of stormwater that overwhelmed the property's sump pumps, resulting in eight units flooding, along with several hallways and laundry rooms. One tenant who remains on the ground floor says it's been a nightmare. I don't want other people to have to go through what I went through. And since this is the fourth time that this happened, I wanted other people to know that every two years, this downstairs floods. The property has been in a long process of remediation. Burgo says one restoration company canceled on their work. It's taken another company weeks to dry out the building. There is still no date yet on when all the cleanup efforts will be complete. Let's bring in forewarned meteorologist Mike Doyle now for another check at the forecast. And yep. Mike, a beautiful day out there. Will yes. the sun last into the weekend? We will get some sun this weekend. We'll be warmer as well. Some clouds moved in though for tonight and will continue throughout our Saturday, but Sunday will be a much sunnier day overall. And I think a lot of us will enjoy the weekend. It will be much on the warmer side. Buffalo right now, 48 degrees. We will see the cloud cover increase and thicken. We're staying dry now, but there will be some rain showers that take over for tonight. A look at our radar. We look off towards the south and west. That's where the rain is right now in really central Pennsylvania, but it's making its way north. We're dry here for uh, this evening. Once you get closer to uh, 10, 11 o'clock, uh, 11 o'clock or so, that's when we'll see the rain move into really our the southern tier and also McKean and Potter County. But the heart of the system's well off towards our south. We're on the very fringe of it, so again, some spottier showers for tonight that will continue into early Saturday morning. Our temperatures right now: Burt 35, Brant 46, Delvin at 38, and Bradford 40 degrees this evening. By the time we wake up tomorrow morning, we'll be in those mid to upper 30s, so much warmer start compared to the past couple of mornings. And then by the afternoon, our highs mid to upper 40s. A few of us will reach those lower 50s for tomorrow. The winds right now of the south and southeast. It's a warmer flow, helping our temperatures reach the 50s this afternoon and also mild for tonight. Our wind gusts right now 12 miles per hour in Buffalo Grove though at 20 and only at 21 and climber at 10 miles per hour tonight 34 to 42. Again, clouds are going to increase and thicken scattered rain showers tonight into early tomorrow morning and mainly rain showers. But there's a chance it could be a few wet snowflakes that mix in with some raindrops near the state line. Most would just see raindrops tonight. Tomorrow, 43 to 52, mostly cloudy, some spottier rain showers in the morning. Still plenty of dry time throughout the entire day and especially the afternoon for tomorrow. But the clouds will be stubborn and that's what we're going to see here. Here's tomorrow morning early 7 o'clock scattered rain showers at that time. But as we go throughout 7 o'clock to lunchtime, it will become less and less and less. And then by lunch, uh, maybe a sprinkle left over for our easternmost counties. And after that, the clouds will be sticking with us, but it will be dry throughout the afternoon hours for tomorrow. On Sunday, we'll start off with some clouds in the morning. It will be a dry day, but we will see a lot more sunshine by the afternoon and our temperatures really jump up quite a bit. We'll be back into the upper 50s and lower 60s for our Sunday. So a nice weekend overall, a few rain showers, but again, they happen mainly overnight into early tomorrow morning. Here's a look at that seven day forecast for you into the 60s. We go forecasting close to 70 for our high on Monday. Again, keep on keep in mind that the record high temperature on Monday 63 we're forecasting 69. So a good chance we can completely blast right through that record high temperature. Some evening rain showers for our Tuesday, a few showers for our Wednesday into our Thursday. Then we'll settle back down to the mid to upper 40s end of next week. Patrick. Mike, thank you. A new cannabis shop just put out their now open sign. Buffalo Dreams is a woman and minority owned cannabis retail dispensary on Niagara Falls Boulevard, Boulevard in the town of Tonawanda. The owners say this is just the beginning for their budding business. I'd like to be in the Finger Lakes very soon. Um, it's a very prosperous for everybody to join. Anybody who has any skills, they can come and 
use it in the cannabis industry. We're allowing a lot of the farmers to sell their products here, so it's good on both ends and it's good for the city, the county, and the state as well. The shop will be open daily from 10 in the morning to 10 at night, and they do accept online orders. Up next, sanos have been used for thousands of years in cultures around the world. From the steam to iced cold plunges, we'll share the health benefits of the backyard sauna sensation. A popular Buffalo road race steps off tomorrow at noon. The 46th Shamrock Run. Organizers expect around 4,800 runners this year. The 8K race starts and ends at Louisiana Street. The route takes runners along South Park Avenue and Seneca Street. Registration for the race is 45 bucks. Proceeds benefit the Old First Ward Community Center. We have links for more information at WIVB.com under the Founded on 4 tab. Backyard bathing is making a comeback overseas after exploding here in the States as the health conscious dip their toes into this trend. Experts say there are a lot of benefits if you're brave enough. Ian Lee has the story from London. <laughs> the shivering sensation <laughs> oh, God. can take more than your breath away. That was enough. <laughs> but dipping into a cool pool, these backyard bathers say, delivers a feel-good frozen feeling. No, it's good, it's refreshing, isn't it? Experts claim the health benefits on this pathway to pain start by steaming with strangers at 185 degrees. It is actually doing amazing things in terms of reducing inflammation and promoting circulation in the body. But it's the plunge into freezing 35 degree water that leaves sauna goers smiling. Endorphins flowing through the body, so that's why people will talk about feeling quite high after the sauna and the cold plunge. The shock to the system is electrifying London. I feel great. I feel alive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With community sauna baths bubbling up amid the city's concrete rat race, offering a place to disconnect. This is the one place 
where I'm not reaching for my phone. I'm in the sauna, I'm not even thinking about it. It relaxes me more. I think because you have to slow down your mind and your body. And experts say the more you go, the more you soak up the benefits. Having that once a week ritual can just be a really amazing reset. Letting off some steam in a cool new community. Ian Lee, CBS News, London. Coming up, Republicans in Washington are casting their ballots in the GOP presidential primary. Hear what voters are saying about the race heading into the pivotal week of Super Tuesday. Plus, calls for fair funding for Fredonia. Hear why students are speaking out about program cuts at the SUNY school. And more in the next half hour of News 4 at 7. You're watching News 4, your local news leader. Now, live from Buffalo, this is News 4 at 7. Students at SUNY Fredonia pounded the pavement this afternoon. Back in December, the school announced they would be cutting 13 low enrollment degree programs. Now, students are protesting the change. The group Students for Fredonia marched on campus and to downtown Fredonia. They're fighting for transparency from the college, which they say still has not released any figures that show cost savings by cutting these programs. According to the school, the affected programs represent 15% of all Fredonia majors and 2% of all of the school's undergraduates. Our liberal arts, our humanities, our art programs are what make up Fredonia and by taking them away it's kind of depleting the community, leaving a, an irreversible scar on our campus and just inevitably de depleting the morale of our students in those majors and that take classes within those departments. 
Prior to today, the school did say current students within the programs can complete their degrees and graduate. A Buffalo man could spend the rest of his life in prison after shooting and killing a man in the Queen City. The Erie County District Attorney's Office tells us that 44-year-old Martinko Caver appeared before a judge yesterday on one count of second-degree murder. We're told in September of 2022, Caver intentionally shot 33-year-old George McGee III on Glenwood Avenue around 2 in the morning. McGee died at ECMC. As of this afternoon, a return to court date has not been scheduled. A third Catholic church in western New York is set to close within weeks. The Buffalo Catholic Diocese confirms that St. Lawrence Parish on East Delavan Avenue in Buffalo will close. The diocese says because of the parish's financial condition and lack of attendance, there are no promises as to how long it will remain open. Parishioners are invited to attend another parish. An upstate New York man received the maximum sentence today for shooting and killing a young woman who was in a vehicle that mistakenly drove onto his property. 66-year-old Kevin Monahan chose not to speak at his sentencing for the murder of 20-year-old Kaylin Gillis. She was in an SUV with some friends last April searching for someone's party when they made a wrong turn and pulled onto Monahan's rural driveway. The judge explained why he handed down the maximum sentence. I think you really could possibly do the, th do the same thing again. It's obvious to me that you feel justified. You don't take any responsibility for the outcome of your actions. The judge also added up to four years more for tampering with the murder weapon. The race for the Republican presidential nomination continues in Washington, D.C., with voting underway in the district. But an even bigger prize is just days away, Super Tuesday. Willie James Inman is in Washington with the latest. And who says there are no Republicans in D.C.? Nikki Haley is campaigning for last-minute support in Washington, D.C., as district Republicans start voting in the GOP primary. Don't complain about what happens in a general election if you don't vote in this primary. It matters. Former President Donald Trump has beaten Haley in every state that has voted so far. But the former U.N. ambassador has vowed to stay in the race through at least Super Tuesday, the 15 states that go to the polls next week. Nikki is still putting her uh, message out there, and I support her message. Haley's campaign announced that it raised more than $12 million in February, helping her stay in the race for the foreseeable future. But she's way behind in the battle for delegates. A third of the delegates needed to win the nomination are up for grabs on Tuesday, meaning Trump could all but lock up the race with a big night. He released a video on social media Friday urging his supporters to vote. It's called Super Tuesday. It's big stuff. And it's the single most important primary day of the year. Polls show immigration is the number one concern among voters right now. And both President Biden and former President Trump were about 300 miles apart in Texas Thursday visiting the U.S.-Mexico border, talking about the issue that could swing the race. Willie James Inman, CBS News, Washington. A truck accident in Louisville, Kentucky, led to a dramatic rescue on the Clark Memorial Bridge. A tractor trailer with the driver inside was left dangling over the Ohio River after it smashed through a guardrail. A rescue crew set up a rope system as one firefighter rappelled down to the stranded driver, hooked her to a safety harness, and the crew lifted them both to safety. Thank God. That's what she kept saying. Thank God. And I, I told her, I said, just take a deep breath and then here's what I need you to do. Because I needed her to assist in, you know, moving certain ways to be able to get the harness on right. And once we did that, we got her free of the seatbelt and uh, she was on my system. So I knew that we were good from there. They train for this type of stuff all the time. And you saw that these were some serious heroes here. The driver was taken to the hospital to get checked out as a precaution. And the driver of another car was also taken to the hospital with injuries. Firefighters in Texas are desperately working to contain massive wildfires that have killed at least two people. It's now the largest fire in Texas history and has burned more than one million acres since Monday. More help from state and federal fire teams is expected in the area tonight with the hope to dampen the flames ahead of the fire-friendly weather conditions expected this weekend. Meanwhile, Nevada is being hammered with feet of snow. As Carter Evans reports, the storm's intensity will only keep building throughout the night.
Even for a place that's used to getting a lot of snow, this could be one for the record books. As the massive Sierra snowstorm moves in, mountain roads are becoming difficult to navigate. We're about 7,000 feet up right now on Donner Pass, and it's already pretty much whiteout conditions, and this is really just the beginning. Meteorologists say soon these roads will be impassable. We're trying to make it to the Berkeley Central Sierra Snow Lab while we still can to meet up with lead scientist Andrew Schwartz. Now we're starting to get those bigger, fluffier snowflakes coming down, so I'd imagine those rates will start picking up pretty soon. Schwartz says we could see up to five inches an hour at the peak of the blizzard with winds gusting to 100 miles per hour on some mountain peaks. We're looking at two, potentially three days of these very high wind speeds that are going to be blowing the snow around and making conditions outside very dangerous. Some areas could see more than 10 feet of snow and like many here, Schwartz is prepared to be snowed in. Are you going to be here for the duration? I am set up to be here till at least Sunday, if not Monday. You all stocked up? Oh. Grocery store owner Shannon Parrish says she can tell people here in Truckee, California are concerned about the storm by the way they're shopping. We definitely are way busier and everyone's stocking up on staples and you know, basically planning on having enough food for the whole weekend. Turning to the weather here in western New York now, Mike Doyle joins us with mm -hmm. a look at what's in the mix in the next couple days, Mike. Yeah, clouds moving in for tonight. We will get some rain showers and mainly rain showers. There could be a wet snowflake thrown in towards McKean and Potter County, but most of us are going to stay warm and well above the freezing mark. But we are seeing that heavier snow again making their way through the Sierra Nevadas, where again, they're anywhere from 10,000 plus feet around 14,000 feet in some of those peaks as well. So they're talking feet upon snow, but here locally, of course, we could see that and our elevation is only around 600 feet for a lot of us, but we aren't going to see those uh, winds of 100, 100 uh, miles per hour or more. But like I mentioned, closer towards home, cloudier skies, some uh, spottier rain showers out there for this evening. We'll see the cloud cover increase and thicken. You can see a few more of those showers off towards the south and west. You can look, it's not a whole lot, but there will be some rain showers for tonight. Earlier in the day, around in the morning, we saw plenty of sunshine and blue sky. And Jason sent us this really nice photo in Tonawanda, the blue sky out there, the sunshine out. It's a very nice day. We're not going to see a whole lot of sun for tomorrow, but it will be back on Sunday. Our temperatures right now, uh, East Aurora at 42, Little Valley at 38, Shingle House 38, and Climber 41 degrees this uh, evening. A closer look. Those showers just off towards the south and west. Give it maybe another hour or so. Those start to move into Chautauqua County, even Warren County as well in Pennsylvania. As you look throughout the overnight hours, showers, you can see some of that pink popping up towards Potter County, and that's our model hinting at maybe a few wet snowflakes thrown on in, but it's really not going to do a whole lot. We'll see a lot more raindrops and snowflakes for tonight. Warm throughout the weekend. We could break another record high temperature starting next week, Monday talk more about that coming up. Patrick. Mike, thank you. Updated COVID guidelines are out from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. They recommend people who test positive for coronavirus no longer have to isolate for five days. But they say even after resuming normal activities, people should take precautions, such as keeping one's distance and wearing masks, especially if they're around the elderly and other vulnerable, pe vulnerable people. Still to come at 7, tech companies are building artificial intelligence into more devices than ever before. From smartwatches to surgical tools, we'll take a look at where AI is headed next.
The world of technology is always changing and artificial intelligence is a big part of that. Bradley Blackburn shows us how tech companies are incorporating AI into everything from our phones to the operating room. Robotic surgery has been around for years, but doesn't give surgeons the same feel as a hands-on operation. That may be changing. This robot uses artificial intelligence to send sensory feedback to the hand devices, so surgeons can feel when they're touching tissue. It's just one of many AI products on display at the Mobile World Congress Tech Show in Barcelona. This smartwatch from DoublePoint connects to your device and allows you to use your fingers like a mouse to navigate through apps. Every time you tap your fingers, there's a certain vibration that occurs. And that we can pick up with the sensors that are already in our smartwatches. What is the population of Barcelona? The company Humane is selling a $700 AI pin that's operated with your voice. Barcelona is approximately 1.609 million people. The device can also project information to your hand and allows you to scroll with your finger movements. AI is all the buzz right now, but some experts say too much too soon could come with a backlash. And this is a risk because from a consumer perspective, if a lot of these brands that you see around us are just throwing AI in as buzzwords, it risks becoming increasingly meaningless because AI doesn't mean a lot to consumers. It's what it actually enables. Right now, it enables this Lenovo laptop to create a transparent display. On this phone, it can turn text commands into a picture instantly. Analysts believe this is just the beginning and AI will eventually transform technology. Bradley Blackburn, CBS News, New York. Coming up, countdown to launch. We'll hear from a central New York native before her mission into space. In the Sunshine State today, the next manned crew to space is getting ready for blast-off. Andrew Donovan from our sister station in Syracuse spoke to one of the astronauts who also hails from central New York. Hello, Syracuse. <laughs> Those words will have new meaning when Dr. Jeanette Epps says them, looking down at her hometown from space. It wasn't natural for me at all. Um, what was natural was to work hard and, to, you know, because Neither of our parents were engineers or scientists. A picture of her mom will go with her. Tribute to the woman who rocket fueled her passion through school, graduating from Corcoran in 1998 and Lemoyne in 2002. The teachers and professors that I had at both of those places were very supportive of everything that um, my sister and I wanted to do. 
So um, I think that um, Lemoyne in particular, um, uh, classic education, Jesuit education, um, really helped me, you know, throughout my career. She says curiosity was key, a good trait for all the research she'll do on the International Space Station. One experiment is herself taking regular blood and saliva samples to study how humans live without the protection of Earth. Everything that we do on the International Space Station will be a stepping stone from low Earth orbit to the moon. So all that we learn in low Earth orbit, we can use on the moon um, to develop a permanent presence on the moon eventually, and maybe even use a lot of that stuff that we learn on the space station as well as the moon to take it back to maybe Mars. A nearing accomplishment for man and womankind. How did this girl from Syracuse get here in class with an instructor speaking nothing but Russian and it's me and an interpreter in class? So um, yeah, it is, um, it's not lost on me um, how incredible some of these things that I've been able to do were and are. And um, I am happy to represent Syracuse in that, in a lot of these endeavors and bring it back, take all of that I've learned and take it back to Syracuse and tell people that this, you know, if you see me doing this, there's absolutely no reason you can't do these also. This girl from the South Side has always been shooting for the stars. Now it becomes literal. The rocket is ready and so is Dr. Jeanette Epps, thanks in part to her upstate New York upbringing. At the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, Andrew Donovan, News 4. Here at home, the Buffalo Bisons are teaming up with NASA to ensure your total solar eclipse experience is a grand slam. On April 8th at noon, the ballpark will open its gates for a viewing event. Bison's Assistant General Manager Brad Bisbing says a team of NASA scientists will welcome fans and answer any questions about the celestial event. The Q&A period, in, in fact, uh, kids can submit their questions in advance. We know a lot of schools are going to be off. You can submit your questions in advance at bisons.com slash eclipse, and uh, you can be chosen to actually be able to ask the, the question themselves to the scientists on that day. Tickets are free, but you're asked to pick them up from the team's box office in advance. You can also snag them online with a $1 processing fee. Bisbing tells us the first 2,000 people to enter the park will also receive a free pair of Eclipse viewing glasses. And speaking of the eclipse, we'll bring in forewarned meteorologist Mike Doyle now. And mm -hmm. Mike, is it still a little too early to know if Mother Nature will cooperate for us? Uh, yes, yeah, still a little too early, but we can look back and see what normally happens on April 8th. And that's what we did here. There's a higher chance that there will be a mostly cloudy sky around, actually a 67% chance that we'll have more clouds in the sky than sunshine. Uh, for a partly cloudy sky, I think a lot of us would take that 11% uh, percent chance. And then for a mostly sunny sky 20 so again it's not uh, out of the question that we could get a mostly sunny sky but I will just be prepared that we'll probably see more clouds and not but fingers crossed and we're hoping and of course we'll watch that date very closely and we'll try to nail down that forecast for you as we get closer to the 8th of April. A look at this weekend where there will be more clouds in the sky for tomorrow some scattered rain showers for the first couple hours in the morning dry by lunchtime and the rest of the afternoon will be good a okay and then by our Sunday mostly sunny highs back in the lower 60s so it will be a warm one this weekend some rain just off towards the south and west will start to make their way into the southern tier and also northern Pennsylvania give it about an hour or so but for us here in maybe Erie County or the Niagara frontier it's not going to happen until much later tonight it's slow moving but not a whole lot of rain but there will be scattered rain showers tonight into the first half of tomorrow. The heart of the system's well off towards our south, and so we're only going to get clipped by this. Our temperatures right now, Shingle House at 38, East Road at 42, Dunkirk at 48, and Randolph 40 this evening. By the time we wake up tomorrow morning, we'll start out in the mid to upper 30s, and then by the afternoon, we'll be in the upper 40s. And a few of us will see the lower 50s, so again, still mild days. Keep in mind our average high temperature is mid 30s, so we're doing A-OK -okay there. Our winds gusting at the moment. Out of the south and southeast, 30 mile per hour gusts in Delavan, uh, Fredonia at 26, Buffalo at 12, and Burt and Albion, 5 and 1 mile per hour. So again, a decent breeze out there for most of us, and that will continue for tonight, then really back off for tomorrow. Tonight, 34 to 42, and then those closest to the state line, 
where you can kind of dip into that 34 degree range. There may be a few wet snowflakes thrown in, but most of us will see raindrops for tonight. Tomorrow, 43 to 52, mostly cloudy, some spotty showers early, a dry afternoon, winds still out of the south. That's going to help keep those temperatures well above average for tomorrow, despite the cloud cover. Here's tomorrow morning early, 7 o'clock. Again, some scattered rain showers at that time. By lunchtime, most of the rain is gone, maybe leftover sprinkle. Clouds will be stubborn for tomorrow, but the afternoon and evening will be dry for our Saturday. And then it's going to our Sunday. Some clouds in the morning, and then we'll see a lot more sunshine for the afternoon. And then we start a really nice, uh, much wa uh, another warming trend basically into uh, next week. Here's that seven day forecast for you. So 51 the high for tomorrow, 62 though for our Sunday, close to 70 on Monday. By Tuesday, 64, some evening showers will be around. And then by our Wednesday and Thursday, still holding on to a better chance of rain. And then by Friday, slightly drier, mostly cloudy. High of 48. Patrick. Mike, thank you. Coming up next, spring is right around the corner, which means some seasonal businesses are set to reopen. We'll tell you which popular Tonawanda spot is opening its doors tomorrow. Here's another sign of the start of spring. Mississippi Muds will fire up the grill and welcome back customers on Saturday. It's located on Niagara Street in Tonawanda. The popular restaurant is celebrating its 37th year serving Western New York residents. It offers local favorites like Salem's hot dogs and Perry's ice cream. It all begins tomorrow at 11 a.m. Well, that is all the time we have for News 4 at 7 tonight. We'll join you back here at 10 with Dave Graber. Have a great night.